We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we may have some other people coming in. Um, this was a limited invite. We didn't have a, a, a lot of invitations go out because there's still a lot of construction going on. So purposely, it's a small crowd. We may have some other people wander in as, as we go through this event. But uh, one change in your program, uh, Congressman Butterfield could not be here today because of scheduling changes. Um, so he apologizes. Uh, we still want to thank him. He, he really was uh, somebody that was instrumental in our downtown streetscape, and uh, we want to continue to thank him. See a couple of council members out here. I think I saw Lois Watkins. Lois is somewhere. Um, W.B. Bullock. Uh, I think we had um, Tom Rogers. Uh, Reuben is up here. Lamont's walking in. So I think most of them are here today. I want to welcome them. And, of course, there's a lot of city staff here as well that we want to welcome. We're really here today to look at this uh, incredible building. Uh, you know, there's a lot. I'm looking at Tim Oakley and his group. Uh, that, you know, you, you start with an idea and, and you're seeing what it's going to look like here. And uh, every time you come in here, it changes. So uh, you're going to see it change even more between now and the end of October. But again, uh, today what you're going to do is be able to go through the first floor and see the areas that they are going to allow you to get in. You're not going to be able to get up to the second floor, but you'll be able to see that in October. Uh, when we have our soft opening before our first event, which is already booked for November the 4th. So, Rob Barnhill, uh, y'all are going to be through by that time, I hope. <laughs> uh, but um, I just want to introduce the folks that are going to be up here speaking with you today. We're going to call up Reverend Garland Jones in just a minute for the invocation. After that, you're going to hear from Rochelle D. Small Tony, our city manager. She's going to give you an update on the project. And then you're going to hear some, some short remarks from Marty Moser, who's the Vice President of Barnhill Contracting, Dev Patik, who is the CEO of Sports Facility Management. They're going to be managing this facility, got a lot of experience in doing this, and, and really they're the ones that kind of got us where we are today uh, with some of the numbers and um, making some things work for us. John McDonald, who's the Regional Executive for Sports Facility Management. William Turner, who's the Senior Vice President for Wells Fargo. Brian Oxford. Uh, New Markets Manager for Community Affordable Housing Equity Corporation, Reuben Blackwell, uh, OIC. And uh, again, our closing prayer will be Reverend Matthew Johnson, Rector of Church of the Good Shepherd. And then after that, uh, I think Barnhill's reps are, are going to be doing the tours of the building. So again, as each, as each one finishes, if the other one could come up, we'd appreciate it. You know, there are three important dates for a building, any building, any kind of construction. One is the groundbreaking, which we, we had a while back. It was a little chilly that day, if I remember. Uh, second is topping off ceremony, and this is really our topping off ceremony. Uh, we, we call it the site experience instead. And then third, the grand opening, which again, in our case, is scheduled for the end of October with the uh, uh, November 4th being our first event that's already booked here. I think some other people may talk about events that are being booked right now, but uh, there's a lot of interest in this facility, and you're going to continue to see that ramp up as we, we get further to the opening date. You know, this has been a kind of a long road to get here. The first um, conversation of a civic center or community facility in Rocky Mount was in 1940. They started talking about it, and then it came up again in 1974 and again in the 90s. So this has not been an, uh, a five-year project. This has uh, started 40 years ago, the conversation, and we probably should have had something like this many, many years ago. But we didn't then, but we're going to have it now. Um, in 1974, there was a report uh, for Civic Center was to be used as a multi-purpose venue for recreational events, business trade shows, con consumer trade shows, conventions, meetings, cultural, cu cultural events, like variety shows and stage productions, civic, social, and religious events, as well as expo, expo, expo events involving product displays and meetings. The one thing that wasn't on here back in the 1970s was amateur sports, and that's a big part of what's going to happen in this building now, along with all those other things that they mentioned in 1974. What happened was in uh, 1990 or uh, 2012, um, the uh, 
idea reemerged when we were hosting the 2013-14 USA South Spring Sports Festival. This is uh, all the uh, colleges that are involved in the same conference for North Carolina Wesleyan were here in Rocky Mount. Uh, they came in 2013 and 14, and they uh, they were doing golf here, baseball, tennis, lacrosse, and uh, they had such a great time in Rocky Mount. The venues were so good. They said, "Do you have an, a, a, an event center somewhere we can have a basketball tournament?" And the answer w was, "No, we can't do that." But the fact that that tournament over a three-day period in 2013 brought approximately $500,000 to the city of Rocky Mount in revenues that we would have not had otherwise if that tournament hadn't have been here kind of lit up the light bulb for us. Um, I think Charles Penny and, and others had discussions about it, but it was something that we saw that there was an opportunity here. If we had a facility, we could attract people to Rocky Mount and not only would it encourage more downtown development, but it has always been looked at as an economic development project for the city of Rocky Mount. Um, in its first year, the projected operating revenue will be over 1.6 million. By year 10, the projected revenue is expected to be almost $6 million a year out of this building. And um, the expected economic impact, though, uh, for this facility over a 10-year period is about $264 million. Now, I know people question that, but I know John McDonald's over here, and we saw in Myrtle Beach, the first weekend they had it open, they had 80 volleyball teams coming in for a tournament. Now, that's 10 players a team, that's 800 people. But you gotta assume that there's gonna be a coach for each team, that's another 80, and at least one parent from uh, each uh, team would come. So almost 1,000 people coming in for one tournament. They were staying for three nights, put three people in a room, that's still 300 rooms a night that they booked, and that's not to count the food that they bought, the gas that they spent, and the other money in the community that they spent. It's a huge economic driver if you have a facility like this and you can book the events that are here. Dev, I'm gonna count on you for that. <laughs> uh, but it is something that we're proud of. We're proud that we are where we are today with this facility. It was not easy, I can tell you, uh, but I think hopefully the Proof will be in the pudding, and as this becomes a successful facility for Rocky Mount and for this area, I think we're all going to be very, very proud of it. So I want to thank you for being here today. I'm going to call on now uh, Reverend Garland Jones to come up, and then the other speakers will come up in order. Reverend. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We lift you up. We call you blessed. Thank you for the unity of this city and all that has taken place. Thank you for this process, Lord God, that has taken place from the groundbreaking to this day. Let us know that you are in it. Let it bring us together as a city and let us know that you are behind us. We call this day blessed. We look forward to all that will come from it and thank you for every effort that has taken place that has brought us to this place. And we look to you as the author and the finish of our faith and all that we do in this city. And we call it blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Good afternoon. It truly is a pleasure to have you here to get a sneak peek at this beautiful 165,000 square foot Rocky Mount Event Center. This facility will be one of the most versatile in the country and as such is expected to draw visitors from far and near into our city. You are seated in the field house, which will contain eight basketball courts that can be converted to 16 volleyball courts. In addition, the north end of the building, which we're in, and facing that way, can be set up with a championship basketball court to host high school or college basketball tournaments. Sounds like an invitation to the UNC Carolina women's basketball team, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> the field house can be divided to create the arena setting on the north end, which is behind you again, with telescopic seating on the west, north, and east sides 
with bleachers on the south end. So basically, bleachers will surround the courts. The arena set up for a championship court will seat 4,400 people. The same space can be set up for a concert or a graduation, with the stage being set up on the south end of the arena floor. When the Rocky Mount Event Center is set up for an arena event, an acoustical turn, uh, curtain will divide the field house. On the southeast wall of the building will be the locker rooms and a state-of-the-art OIC medical clinic with 3D mammography and x-ray capabilities. Citizens of the Twin Counties will have access to medical services in a beautiful 4,500 square foot facility. Later in the program, you will hear more about the clinic. Located above you on the west and north sides of the field house, which is on the right hand side, is the mezzanine area. Strategically located, this area will provide college coaches and recruiters a place to observe athletes competing in these tournaments. Seating will be available in the mezzanine area where when the court is set in the arena configuration. On the north end of the building is the banquet hall, which can be divided into four different rooms to host events such as conferences, weddings, receptions, or other social events. There are also meeting rooms on the northwest corner of the building on the second floor, which can be accessed by the elevator that is also in that area. Located on the first floor beneath those meetings rooms is the courtside cafe, which accesses the sidewalks. Moving around to the west side of the building, which faces Northeast Main Street, is the main entrance with a ticket office and the front desk reception. Proceeding south along Northeast Main Street will be the Family Entertainment Center, known as the Game Day Adventure and Arcade. This facility will include a ropes course, climb and clip, velocity, and the ticket redemption area. This area also has four party rooms for events such as children's birthday parties, day camp, field trips, and so much more. With all of these amenities, it is easy to see why we believe this facility will become a focal point of activity in the downtown area. At the conclusion of this program, representatives from Barnhill Contracting will take you on a limited site tour of the first floor of this incredible building. Please stay within the red ropes or red tapes for your safety. I want to thank you for joining us today, and I hope when you leave here, you will continue to share in my excitement, our excitement for the future of our downtown and our city. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, and on behalf of Barnhill Contracting Company and Holt Brothers Construction, uh, we'd like to welcome you to our job site. Uh, it may not look like one today, but Typically, this site has about 100 to 110 people working on it day in and day out. And uh, that's what's made this possible. Uh, it was 13 months ago that we held the groundbreaking. And so what you see before you is 13 months of very tough uh, coordination and a lot, of, a lot of effort and a lot of hard work. Uh, this isn't the simplest building in the world. Uh, it's got a lot of complexities to it to design and construct a facility that's built around flexibility with the multiple court scenarios, multiple seating scenarios. Uh, there's been a lot of work that's taken place and I, I feel like I've got to acknowledge a few folks that have been involved in that coordination and design and construction process. Uh, first, I'd like to recognize Oakley Collier Architects and Perkins and Will, formerly Sink Combs Deathless, uh, doing the design work on this project. It's a magnificent building 
And I think everyone's going to be very pleased with uh, the design and the, the layout and how it flows. Uh, engineers being Stewart Engineering, Stocks Engineering, and Atlantic. And then I've got to also acknowledge, this is a team project. You know, they, this only gets accomplished by working together as a team. I've got to acknowledge the city of Rocky Mount and its staff for working diligently with us as a partner uh, and their owner's rep, uh, CMTS. And then also uh, SFA, SFM um, on their input and their uh, contributions and coordination to make this happen. It's really exciting for us as a company uh, to be a part of a project that is really transformative, that uh, helps to reshape downtown and a part of the community that we live in. Uh, so we thank the city for the opportunity and are excited to finish the project on time in October as we are scheduled right now. So thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Dev Patik and it's uh, just a pleasure to be here and under roof now. Uh, for those of you who know the history of this project, uh, there are an extraordinary number of people in this room who deserve a lot of credit. Uh, none of them more than, than Mr. Charles Penny and John McDonald, who... <laughs> to give you a little history, um, bumped into one another and started to have a conversation about the Civic Center concept that had been put forth in a previous study. And John said to him, Charles, I think you ought to make a phone call to our office. And I ended up on a phone call with, with Charles, and from there we started conceiving of what might happen. And we came and we studied the market and uh, came in first with doubt, to be honest. We drove in and said, how are we going to make something happen here? I don't, I don't. And then we started to look. And we said, wait a minute, they're already hosting 100,000 uh, visitors a year. They're already in the sports tourism business. And we started to look at the, this particular property and, and downtown and how new market tax credits could be applied here. And the project started to come to life. And what I'd encourage you to do is to think about, uh, uh, if, if I wish that I lived in a place where our public officials are willing to take this kind of challenge on and this kind of risk. Uh, it's easy to say no. It's very difficult to say yes. And this council stuck with it. They stuck with it when this was a piece of dirt. And they stuck with it, I think, because of one reason, and, and you all can probably share in this. If you think about this facility, when it's active and it's live, the things that will happen here for kids that live six blocks away and 20 blocks away and 500 miles away will be powerful. And I would encourage you to think about that face in the crowd. That kid right now, she or he has no idea that they're going to get in on this court or pick up a paintbrush or go into that clinic and have something powerful and transformative happen, but that's exactly what's gonna happen. And it's gonna happen because of the courage and the perseverance and the teamwork of your local officials. The rest of it, it would never be were it not for them. It's also gonna happen because the team on the ground here, uh, my business partner, Jason Clement in the back, he and I have been together since the beginning, many, many years, 15 years, uh, has developed our management company and John McDonald, who's built the team. John is our vice president, uh, has built the team that's here and is building the team that's, that's booking the events and making this happen. So I'm not gonna say anything else other than to welcome you and introduce you to John McDonald, who's personally played a very important role in the germination of this project from its very early concept. And to the mayor and council, I have to tell you, it's a privilege to be here. I'll say one other thing, the world, the country is watching. Literally, the country's watching. You saw the HBO special, but more than that, the model that's here with the health clinic here, with the versatility of the facility, there are a whole lot of other communities who are saying, hey, what if we built something closer to downtown? What if we created a place where people could walk to it and get what they need when we're not in tournament time? What if we did what Rocky Mount is doing? And I think you're gonna see that come to life even more and more over the next year. So, and that's in large part thanks to the success that John and his team are already, already having in booking this venue. So I'll turn it over to you, John. Thank you all. Good afternoon and thank you, Dev. Um, it's always hard to follow Dev. He's so energetic. Um, it it kind of makes you think, man, what am I gonna say? Um, but he brings that passion to our company every day. 
and that's what we hope to bring to the city of Rocky Mount. I want to first introduce you to your local staff here on the ground because they will be responsible for the day-to-day -day operation. They will be the folks that uh, when people call in to try to book an event, um, book a reunion, those type of things, those are the faces and the voices they will see and talk to. So I'm going to start with our general manager, um, Chip Morrell. Actually, Marcus Morrell. We're trying to leave the chip alone. He wants to be known as Marcus now. And then we have Ashley Pittman, and Ashley is our Director of Marketing. And then we have another Chip, who wants to be known as Chip, Chip Hutchinson, who is our Business Development and Sponsorship Manager. And Chip has a wealth of experience. Chip used to work for the Durham Bulls and sold sponsorship there. So he's got a wealth of knowledge and contacts, and he has uh, got great roots in Eastern North Carolina. Um, our Sales Manager is Jackie Elder. And Jackie will be responsible for our corporate events, a lot of our reunions, at reunions and meetings. And last but not least, we have Taylor Arrington, who is our office administrator. So I really wanted to give those folks um, some recognition because they're in your community. They live here. They work here. Uh, and they will be active in the community. We will not be here and be seen as takers. We will be seen as givers. Uh, it is our goal to make sure, as Deb said, the kid that's down the street that no one thinks about gets an opportunity to come in here and showcase whatever those skills are. To come here and to compete, to come here and learn and understand that the community here in Rocky Mount cares and is giving back. I'm going to give you a quick update about what's going on from a booking standpoint. I think one of the things that the mayor said, we have already confirmed for our November the 4th grand opening event. We will announce that event in the coming months. Uh, we've got to do a little bit more coordination uh, to get ready for it, and then we will announce that, and I think the community will be very excited about what will happen on that day. Uh, in terms of what's going on in the facility right now, we have about 47 events that we have on the books that we're in the process of even talking to. Of those 47, we feel like we're going to contract at least half of those. Uh, so we're really pleased with the start that we've had uh, in terms of booking the facility. I was in Myrtle Beach yesterday talking to two event owners, and one is already moving his events from Raleigh to here. We had that conversation yesterday. Uh, we recently signed uh, a proposal and contract uh, with uh, NTBA, which is the largest youth basketball organization in North Carolina. They're moving their state championships here. Those championships were, uh, will be held in Charlotte this year, but they'll be coming here in 2019. So the momentum is already happening. Um, I'm out there beating people up about Rocky Mountain. They said, where's Rocky Mountain? Where's Rocky Mountain? I said, grab a map. I said, if you know anything about I-95, you can find Rocky Mountain. I said, because it's midway between New York and Miami. And when they see it, they start looking at all the things that are around it. So they see Raleigh, major airport. They see Virginia Beach. They see Richmond. They see south, um, south of Rocky Mountain. They say, man, think about all the teams that come from all those areas that play in tournaments right now. And the light starts going off. And it's like, you know what? It's affordable and it's easy access. The majority of these teams, they drive in because it's so expensive to play travel sports. So you would put a, a group of 10 kids in a van and the parents traveling right behind them and you've got a caravan of 20 or so vehicles and they're gonna be coming to Rocky Mount. And it's gonna be our job, not only, not only Marcus and his team, but the city to welcome those folks in, to show them that we're here and we're here to serve. And again, I just wanna thank you. I wanna thank Charles. Charles and I sat in his sister's kitchen when we talked about this and he had reached out, Sporty Gerald's was a a good friend of both of ours and I said Charles I think you got something but I think you need to make a few changes and again I'm just happy to be a part of this project I live right down the road in, in Fayetteville North Carolina I wish we had something like that but we don't so I'm gonna take the next right I'm gonna take the next best thing and being right here in Rocky Mount and I wish y'all nothing but success thank you good afternoon uh, I'm William Turner with Wells Fargo and we were part of the team that put together financing uh, for this project. Um, Wells Fargo served as the investor in a new market tax credit structure. And some of the other players you will hear later from, from KHEC, uh, but some of the other players that took part were uh, Greenline uh, Financial based out of Colorado um, and um, NCIF, uh, National Community Investment Fund based out of Chicago. So, you know, you've got these national firms coming into Rocky Mount. 
And the reason is the community impact. So as people looked at this project and the impact that the project would have, both from a sports tourism perspective and from the OIC clinic perspective, it was compelling. Uh, it, it, it led us all uh, to this transaction. Um, for me, it's a little more personal. Um, 10 years ago, uh, I sat two blocks uh, away as we served as investor for the Imperial Center transaction. And Imperial Center was a transformational deal, maybe in a slightly different way. Uh, when this town was ravaged by Hurricane Floyd, Imperial Center was part of that rebirth of, uh, of Rocky Mount. Um, I'm a native son. I'm, I am from Eastern North Carolina. Uh, so in this new market tax credit world, we do deals all around the country. Uh, I've traveled from Maine to New Mexico doing new market tax credit transactions, but it's always refreshing when I can do a deal close to home. My wife is from Rocky Mount. I was married in, in a church two blocks away from, from this site. So it's always exciting to come home to Rocky Mount, and it'll be more exciting to come home to a facility like this. So uh, I uh, appreciate all the work that you guys are doing here in Rocky Mount. Uh, there's, I, I think you guys should be proud of, of your city administration. Uh, this is maybe the fourth new market tax credit deal that's been done in Rocky Mount. There are many far larger communities uh, than Rocky Mount that have never done a new market tax credit transaction. So there's a, a level of sophistication uh, within your city government that you guys should be very proud of. And I look forward to seeing great things in the city of Rocky Mount for years to come. Good afternoon. What a great day to be in Rocky Mount. Thank you to the city for hosting this wonderful event and OIC as well. Uh, my name is Brian Oxford. I'm the new markets manager for KHEC. Uh, I'll start with a little bit about what KHEC is and then I'll go from there. Um, KHEC is a nonprofit tax credit syndicator. Uh, we're based in Raleigh. Uh, we invest in tax credit incentivized affordable housing and community development projects like this all over the Southeast and Mid Atlantic. Uh, here in Rocky Mount, in Edgecombe and Nash Counties, we've invested in seven affordable housing projects. Uh, that's about $22 million of investment that we've brought to the community. And for this project, we provided $10 million of new markets tax credit allocation to help the project get going. Um, one of, I'll go back to our affordable housing. Uh, one of our most recent projects is Bill Street Square, uh, about five blocks away from, from this facility. Um, and I'll return to Bill Street in just a minute. So when they asked me to speak today, I started thinking about well, what am I going to talk about? Uh, what is everybody else going to hit on? The sports, the, the health care. So I started thinking about what makes a good transaction? What makes a good new markets investment and a good project be successful? Uh, so I think there's kind of three characteristics, some of which you've already heard from some of the other speakers today. First, there's potential, persistence, and opportunity. Uh, first, somebody has to see the potential. And it sounds like going back to the 40s, somebody saw potential. And then over the years and years, that finally built up. Uh, to, to be a dream and vision where we see now. Uh, there's a catalytic opportunity to have an investment in your community. And the Cedar, city's leadership saw that in the event center. And then you go to persistence. Uh, many impactful investments such as this are not easy. They take many years to materialize. Persistence is critical in following through on that potential that you saw. And the city leadership, staff, OIC, and their advisors certainly have had that uh, persistence to continue to, and continue to demonstrate that today. And then there's opportunity. Opportunities are part of the dream and potential for uh, positive impact. They're forward looking. What can be accomplished with this potential vision? What can be accomplished here in the event center? And they're also explored for extending an investment beyond its original goals. Where can it go and what can we do? And this leads me back to where I was first introduced to the event center and how that ties back to our affordable housing investment over at Bill Street. I was first introduced to the event center in the fall of 2015. Uh, by the city's consultant, Bridget Chisholm. I don't know if Bridget's here today. Um, but I was working on our next new markets tax credit application. It's a, a, a lengthy application we have to submit to the Treasury Department that measure, ma manages this program for the federal government. And as part of that, we have to have pipeline deals. What kind of deals are you going to invest in? What are representative of what you do? Uh, so Bridget approached us and said, hey, I have this awesome project in Rocky Mount. It's sports tourism based. Uh, well, 
I, I was a little bit skeptical at first because I, I, being in Raleigh, I haven't spent a lot of time in Rocky Mount. And at the same time, we have a, a, a mission to invest in community facilities and projects that give back to their community. And originally, it sounded like it was outside focused. Um, but I, I thought it, there was, there's a little bit of story there. Um, and, and it was a clear that it was a strong economic development deal. But Bridget and Charles Penny, you were persistent, didn't give up, kept calling. They kept keeping me updated on the evolution of the event center over the next couple of years. So in early 2016, we invested in Beale Street Square. It's 80 units of new affordable housing in, in downtown Rocky Mount. And, and, and it renewed my interest in the event center. Um, we want to invest in new markets projects that can serve communities where we invested in affordable housing to help raise up all ships, help those people who are in the affordable housing have access to services and opportunities that they might not otherwise have. I thought, wow, this can be basketball courts and volleyball courts. Uh, that those, those people who live over there can come over here and have recreational facilities they might not have had access to before. And maybe we can help providing new markets allocation. And then I thought that combination along with the sports tourism, that sounds like a winner of a project. And so over the next months while we we're waiting on our application to be awarded an allocation, I visited the city uh, and learned about the needs and, of the, and opportunities here. I met with OIC, got to know their operations and toured their health clinics and, and learned that part of the deal. Um, and then that's when they kind of told me they had the potential to extend the project into the health clinic. And that sealed the deal for us. Uh, it's not only a strong tourism driver, but it also serves uh, as a beacon of hope for the community here. And so as the event center approaches completion in the next few months, I look forward to the grand opening and seeing how Rocky Mount blossoms with the new visitors and how the community benefits from the new health, wellness, and recreation opportunities. The potential is here for amazing positive change and your persistence is paying off. I also look forward to bringing my, three, who, my daughter, who will be three years old, uh, when this opens to come play around in the ballocity for new adventures. I think she'll love that. So thank you again and best of luck on the event center. Good afternoon, everybody. Well, I'm the cleanup man. I'm the last one on the program. So um, if you just allow me just a few minutes, um, since I do wear a dual hat, I'm blessed and pleased to be a member of the Rocky Mount City Council. I'd like to first of all thank everyone who stayed with us, helping us to create this vision, and then not moving when it got tough. So I want to thank the people who voted every cycle that says, we believe you can do this. So that's you. So I want to give, your, give yourselves a hand. Thank you. And then I know our mayor called everybody's names out. But with the members of the Rocky Mount City Council, please stand so we can see the people who work together and we, we discuss together and we fought together, didn't we, <laughs> to make sure that we had something that would work. And I would like to also say that in this place that we're seated, I think it's no better place in Rocky Mount that shows the diverse and inclusive way of thinking together that can happen. And even when people don't like what you're doing, you can take that energy and convert it to make it better. And the product that we came out with at the end is better than the one we started with. So I want to thank all the folk that had the No Event Center signs and say thank you for helping us perfect this vision that will bring people from all over the country right to our backyard with money in their pockets to spend and invest right here. I want to thank you for that. Um, I do want to appreciate the people with the city of Rocky Mount who sometimes get beat up and sometimes we need to be beat up together, but who stayed with it and helped us work it. So if you're with the city of Rocky Mount in any way, shape, or form, capacity, would you stand up? If you're already standing, would you wait? Come on, would you just stand up real quick? We just want to say thank you because we know you might get a check, but you don't get paid for everything you got to do. You're right. Thank you so much. And then, uh, finally, to the family that helps me keep everything together, I would like to thank the OIC team. When, when we were brought together to think about and envision a place that we could become a part of, OIC has been in this community for 50 years next year. And we were created much earlier than me being here. I've been here 20, this is my anniversary, but way before I even got here, I was in grade school in another part of the state. And there were people who came together to address the issue of racial disparity 
and the issue of poverty and the issue of tracking ways and means to get out of a situation that we're in today but make it better for everyone. And those people got together, not just in the African American community, but in the white community as well, and say we can solve our problems if we define them and then we create strategies to make it better for everyone. And so for those people who got together, and the only living founder today that's left for OIC is Mr. Sam Gray. And so when y'all see him, would you pat him on the back and say, thank you, Mr. Gray, for having a vision that opened up the door for literally thousands and thousands of people to have employment, career development, to move them away from subsidy, and now for opening up the door for us to provide access to better health and greater life. And so today, OIC is now, we've been in the, the Fed, Federally Qualified Health Care Center family since 2012. And since 2012, we've opened from one facility, which we saved the old Oakwood Medical Center from going out of business. It was losing money like crazy when we went in there, and we were losing money with it when we started, all right? <laughs> and we learned, though, we learned that we didn't have to do it alone. And so we were able to expand from serving 3,000 patients in 2005 when we first purchased the facility to today in 2018. We now have a, a total universe, Brian, about 14,000 patients, and we're able to serve about 10,000 to 14,000 encounters a year. So I want to thank the citizens of Rocky Mount for supporting us and coming into our centers. Thank you. This cannot be done if you don't have people who can get the job done. And so we want to thank the staff of OIC. First of all, I'm going to say thank you, Sam, for being the guy. Sam Dickens is our chief operating officer. And this is a project that I handed off to him. So when we walk into this unit, 4,500 square feet, this is the first time we had something brand new. We always took something old and made something good from it. So y'all gave us a real new pot to stir up something great. Thank you for that, Rocky Mount. And then from all of our team members, can I ask the OIC team to just stand, and if you would? These are the people who are at the top of their field in every arena. This is just a smattering of us. <laughs> Providers, consultants, staff members, everything you do, we appreciate you. Thank you so much. We'll be bringing the best of what we have to offer here. This will be an integrated facility. We'll have an urgent care here because we don't have an urgent center downtown that will operate with flexibility. We will have an imaging center. One of the things that attracted the New Markets tax investors that in 2016, when we started evaluating the patients that came through our facilities, out of 8,500 folks that we were serving at that time, we had 1,000 women who needed mammograms. Check that, a thousand women who were in a place of either needing to have a regular breast exam and could not afford it, or who were in critical condition and were afraid to be screened because they didn't want to see what was happening after the fact. And so we were given the opportunity to do something about it ourselves. And so in this facility, we'll have a place where women can come and not have to worry about money being the only issue, whether they live or die. That's what I get excited about. We'll have an opportunity for therapies and wellness. We want to partner with, with SFM and move this discussion away from disparity to opportunity. One of the things that we exist for is to bring equity in health care in an affordable and an accountable manner. And when you work with a federally qualified health center, that just doesn't mean we just get some subsidies. What it means is that everything we do is measured by somebody else and is compared against everybody else in our healthcare field of how we perform. So you can be assured that when you walk through these doors, you'll be dealing with folks who are looked at through every angle possible. Don't we know that OIC? <laughs> We're audited by everybody for everything. They're checking and measuring everything. So we care about health outcomes, not just health treatment. 
So what we see this as an opportunity of doing is moving our communities from a place that say we're sick and there's nothing we can do about it to a place that we can put movement at the forefront, to have within walking distance of Holly Street, within walking distance of Down East, within walking distance of Villa Place, and with a short biking distance from South Rocky Mount. Not walking, maybe. You, well, one day, this depends on how well you walk, right? We got a place that we can come expose our kids to the best facilities in the world because that's what we have right here. We got something that nobody in America has and it's right here in Rocky Mount. So what I want to just say to you is that this place that we sit in, we are oiled from the past with the forerunners in Douglas Block. This place has always had health care. We've always had pharmacy. We've always had professionals that have been in this location. But now we're able to move it forward and take it through a lens where everybody is welcome and where we can make this work for everyone. Thank you, Rocky Mount, for helping us make this work. Thank you for continuing to see it through to the end. And thank you for spreading the good news that Rocky Mount is the center of it all. Thank you so much. God bless you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who brings forth new life in this Rocky Mount, we humbly pray you that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of your blessings and glad to do your will. Bless our city of Rocky Mount with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion us into a united people who embrace our diversity. And do with the spirit of wisdom those to whom, in your name, we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace, and that through obedience to the, your law, we may show forth your praise in all we do. All this we ask through your Son, who died and rose again, that we might have life and have it abundantly. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.